Today we're doing episode four of Midnight Gospel. It's been good. I've been I've enjoyed it. Even when it's bad, it's good. There's always something to think about. And at the very least, even if the guest isn't that great, you got the the animation. Let's do it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oops. Whoa. Whoa. Can you hear me? Daniel Hoops? Can't watch your space. It's your boy, Daniel. What? I love these shirts. Daniel Hoops out. No. He has merch? Damn. He's better at it than I am. Clancy's the man. Can I just make his merch? Can I just copy the t-shirt and do that? You guys want to buy that? Mid... Night. Wait, you can't copyright that, over. right? I could just copy that. Midnight gospel shirts. merch coming soon. I'm gonna make all my money stealing things from Netflix. And discovered a planet I think you might be interested in. Mercury Deville, paradise planet unlike any other. Every being on this world is drunk. Has achieved maximum harmony. Oh, same thing. And maximum hedonism. Wow. There's got to be something wrong with it. If that's wrong. I don't, I don't want to be right. right. Uh, but I created an erotic avatar for you. Ooh. Designed so that you could truly enjoy the many that's orgies a, this world has Oh my god. Oh, cool, dude. Me and the computer have different ideas of what erotic means. More cats. Cats are everywhere. Oh no. Oh! We're not going to Mercury to Bell. Oh, this place looks pretty cool, too. Where are the orgies? <laughs> Shout out to Oogie Boogie. Five you know, picking people up by their shirt is against the rules, Cornelius. She reminds me of, uh, what's her name from Undertale? Oh. Hey. <laughs> Wanna learn yoga? <laughs> Think of forgiveness as for freeing your own heart. Right. From these states of grudge and resentment and anger and ill Here we go. Here's there. the podcast. And that's the best we can do. We're not going to love our enemy, but we don't have to be obsessed for our lifetime. Right. We can't do it alone. Right. There's a community of the spirit. Join. All right. Before we get into the community of the spirit, <laughs> they started out talking about forgiveness. I think usually when you hold a grudge or when you are bitter about something that happened in your past, I found that it's usually something that I don't want to look at about myself, like it reveals some uncomfortable truth that I'm not willing to accept. Again, going back to what we were talking about in the other episode about holding on to negative emotions because of past trauma because you think it helps you, I think that sometimes we hold grudges because of trauma and we haven't yet gotten the message from that thing yet. One thing that's helped me to get over betrayal and trauma in the past is to one look at myself and see what things was I not looking at that led to the, the circumstances arising? How was I vulnerable to it? And I think the other half of that is to look at the person who betrayed you as a human being with flaws. That sounds obvious, but it's actually harder to do in practice. I think one very real experience I've had this is with my, my parents. I'm really lucky. I have two really wonderful parents who care about me very much, but it's easy to kind of look back at the past and see ways in which your parents failed you. But then when you think about it, you can you realize that your parents are, were just you. They're just you. They're just bigger versions of you. They didn't know. Like now I'm old enough to have kids. I wouldn't be a perfect father. There's no way. And also it's helpful not to see people as static things. I'm sure that most people have this experience where People remind you of things you did in the past and you think, well, I'm not that person anymore. And that's true. People grow, people change. When we think about other people, we tend to think of them as a static thing. Like this is who that person is. This is what that person said. But actually that person probably had a bad moment, was going through a bad time and or was thinking about things in the wrong way. And so they did something bad. So I think that acknowledging people as human beings who make mistakes and trying to learn from it rather than trying to protect yourself from from changing your worldview at all is what leads to forgiveness. And so I think I'm, I'm blessed to say that I don't think I hold any grudges. Not that none, none that come to mind. While I've been talking, while I've been blabbing on, it's it started snowing, which is crazy. I don't think I've ever seen snow in May before. It's bizarre. <gasps> oh no. What's wrong? Can I marry you? <laughs> Trudy. Trudy. I'm too tough for you. What the hell? Trudy. What was that? You just put that guy in his ass? Trudy. What? Remember that time I proposed to you and then that guy came by and put me in his ass? 
He never came out of the ass. He just went in there. That's it. One lady, she had been, I guess all her stuff was stolen from the place while she was sleeping. And, Yikes. you know, she's all Ugh, alone. Hurts. God knows where she's sleeping. These two guys in the group who were friends said, come sleep under our bridge. Oh, thanks. We'll walk. If you're lonely, you know other people are lonely. It's just find another lonely person. <laughs> I don't know if that's good advice. You're very... I think if you're a lonely person, you... you uh, I don't know, something about that creeps me out. It's almost as though the world is waiting for you to decide what side you're on. Mm. And what matters most to you. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Right. How to but also very difficult to focus your energy really into something. Matters and what's most important to you. And that, that means, you know, in the moment when you're I'm lonely, seeing some repeated themes what's most throughout the show. Yeah. When and you're hungry. One of them is focus. Focus and attention and commitment to something, which is... A tough one for me. Tougher than forgiveness. Free food is what's most important. Like giving someone the most brutal ear beating of all time. I was talking to him about my modular synthesizers. His eyes had glazed over. <laughs> this I'm sure doesn't happen to you because you That's have very self aware. Practice, I, I, but like, I, it was like I was sitting more people in should a think about giant that. yappy meat robot. <laughs> I'm always thinking it's how I get away from this dude. <laughs> and I am thinking, how do I get away from this dude? Like I'm wanting to get away from myself. Like if I like mm, if I could have cool. like ejected from right. The Sometimes you bore yourself to not listen. I was boring myself. So mm -hmm. God knows how the yeah, I mean, this is kind of a too real, too to real story. And I didn't know the guy very at all. I just met him at that, that party. Wow. I come to find out the next week he died in a car accident. <gasps> Damn. And um, so, uh, you know, like in his oh. last moments on Earth. 15 minutes was filled up with what must have been the most rotten ear beating about modular synthesizers on earth and i, I didn't listen to him this is memento mori again memento mori remember death yeah fun reaction series whoa they're they're in other universes we're all gonna die everyone dies my partner died i don't know how to forgive people i'm all alone i sleep under a bridge this guy died in a car crash and then zany action. How we don't get it. We don't really let it in about our mortality. Because if we there really it is again. did Whoa. understand that this body will be a corpse, we would have fewer of the kind of moments where we regret having wasted our time or somebody else's. Just as horrible and brutal as the world can be, it's gorgeous and exquisite too. Time of death is uncertain, but death is certain. Is that necessary? It's really such a nice moment. And then you gotta have a fart joke. I feel like people who conceived the animation to go with the conversation, they weren't really listening. Ah, oh. see what I did there? Hi, Sarah. Can I get a potion? Oh, yes. Oh, Sarah. Sarah's having a good time. I've been milking a crow in here for days. Mama's gotta milk the crow. Mama's gotta milk it. Oh, mama's <laughs> Not uncomfortable. <laughs> it's birdemic all over again. It means thank you and goodbye. Got him. Take that, Sarah. You bitch. It's ass man. Monkey see, monkey do through the That's an interesting thing with the mirror there. I like that. What a joy to get to chat with you. Thank you so much for this conversation. <laughs> Meaning, this is over now, and now it's time for well, chaos. Well, well. It was a delicious snack for the demon that live inside the mire of wood hair. Should not have laughed at that, so but nice to see you. it happened. But, Trudy, I have been practicing my spinning, Trudy. Oh, shush. I like this guy. <laughs> Good villain. Good villain. He's awesome. Trudy, you're full of surprises. Just like on my ass. <laughs> Why am I laughing at this? Damn it. Your blood is mine. Who's the voice actor? He's done such a great job. I want to see a whole show about ass man. It's a terrifying image. He's fine. Oh, the potion. Trudy! My boyfriend! It's so good. It's so amazing to look at. What the f is going on? Yeah, blow your horn. This, yeah, what? That was a weird, dark resolution to that world. Oops. He has a growing collection of items. 
I hope they bring that back later on. I hope that becomes a thing at the end. I like that one a lot better. Forgiveness, and again, Memento Mori, Reflect on Death. It seems to be one of the broader themes of the show. Listening carefully? Good stuff, good stuff. And I liked Ass Man. It's like every episode except for episode 3. Consistently has at least one character that I love. Like, I love the president from the first episode. The random, like, bug bug ninja guy. Episode 3 had nothing, except for the cats. The cats were cool. But episode 4, I really like Ass Man, although he was a villain. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you for episode 5.